things come back. If you add all those folks in, because they're just barely getting by and barely meeting their bills with that, the unemployment rate is about 16%. <coughs> which says one in six families doesn't have a principal wage earner. In, in, in essence. So basically, consumers can't spend as much as they might have spent otherwise. The other thing that's happened to this, consumer credit is a lot tighter than it used to be. It's a lot harder for consumers to get credit. Now part of that's good, part of that's bad. We were getting, it was way too easy there for a while. That's part of what got us into this mess, was, was it was raised way too easy. But in the history of this country, we've never had financial regulation right. It's either been too easy or too rough. And now we're getting into the too rough phase again, uh, where, where it's too hard to get credit. And that, that's beginning to, to, to stymie uh, some things. Uh, but, but anyway, the bottom line is they don't have as much money and they can't get as much credit. So consumers can't like create a boom right now. They can help us a little bit in the growth of the economy as it comes back, but, but they can't create an all out boom. Uh, the next category is investment. <clears throat> well, plant spending has been fairly flat. Okay, there's some, but not much. And plant also includes commercial real estate. There's not a lot of commercial real estate being built right now. There's not a lot of factories being built right now. But the good news is for the last three quarters, a lot of equipment has been bought. Okay? And that's very, very good news. Because one, you know, there's there's technical definitions in textbooks and all, but basically what equipment is, is stuff to make other stuff. That's, that's what equipment is. Well, the only reason you buy stuff to make other stuff is if you think you're going to sell the other stuff. <laughs> and, and so when people are buying equipment, they're saying, hey, orders are up, traffic's up, you know, it's starting to feel good again, it's time to start doing something. So, so equipment spending being up is a good thing. Um, the other thing we, uh, uh, that, that we put in the investment side of things, we put housing in there as well, and it's starting to come back a little bit in, in most parts of the country too, but the other thing we put in the investment category is inventory. Okay? And inventory is, is kind of weird. It, it's the stuff we made but we didn't sell. And inventory in the third quarter went up seven-tenths of one percent, or contributed seven-tenths of one percent to the gross domestic product. So what I told you is consumption gave us two percent, Inventory gave us 0.7, that's 2.7, and the total was 2.2. So everything else put together really kind of washed out, it was actually a little bit negative when you put everything else together. So those were the two big drivers. Inventories go up for one of two reasons. There's one bad reason and one good reason. When the economy starts down, inventories go up. Because you made stuff, because you thought you were going to sell it, and you didn't sell it. So it's sitting there. And then, you know, over time, so you don't make stuff for a while, we have a recession, and you sell off that stuff finally. And then you get to the point where you have to start making stuff again. And when you do that, inventory go up because you're making stuff again. That's the good way inventory go up. Now, we always have one quarter in the economy when, in, when we have a recovery, it always happens, if you're very increased, where inventory drives the economy. The second quarter, it gave us seven tenths of a percent. The, th the fourth quarter, we had this remarkable <coughs> growth of 5.5 or 6 percent. They revised it two or three times around 5.5 percent growth in the fourth quarter. And everybody was all excited about it. Fundamentally, we got less out of consumption that quarter. We got less out of investment that quarter. It, with the exception of, we, of that 5 percent, almost 4 percent of it was inventory. Okay. Which is people building up stuff they think they're going to sell. That's good. And it gives us a nice growth number. But it's also temporary. And people, people only do it once during the recovery. They build back up and they get kind of on the cycle, selling and making, selling and making, and that sort of thing. So we got that huge growth in the fourth quarter. So you saw a lot of headlines a, a week or so ago that said the economy growth slows to 3.2%. That's not really accurate. It grew at 5% in, in, in the fourth quarter, but that was kind of a BS number, right? I mean, it was, you know, it, we get it one time in the deal because of inventory. The growth in the, in the first quarter was much more the sustainable type of growth that you like to have. So the economy didn't slow dramatically, it wasn't one that fast to start with. Okay? <laughs> so, and so, the, so you get that kind of weird fourth quarter number. And consumption didn't give, give us nearly as much in the, in the fourth quarter as it did in the, in, the second, in the third quarter because we didn't have cash for money anymore. Anybody want to guess what government's been doing in all this? Do you think government's been spending a lot of money or saving a lot of money? <laughs> yeah, government spending's been pretty good to us. Actually, though, in the third quarter, it gave us some, some growth. In the, First quarter gave us some growth, and the fourth quarter was actually a little bit negative, just kind of a weird thing. Federal government civilians spent lots of money, as you would expect right now. State and local governments taking on the chin, did not spend so much. There's actually went down a little bit. And
And then we happen to be in one of those military procurement cycles where you know some quarters they buy less and other quarters this happened to be one of those quarters they bought less. So balanced government didn't do that much at the end of the year. Another good piece of news is exports have gone up every quarter. This is started about 10, 12, 14 percent a quarter. That's very good news. Because what that says is people in other countries are buying our stuff. That means they think their economies are coming back now. They have confidence. They're spending money again. Because for us to grow, we have, you know, we, we have to, uh, um, uh, we have to have other people buy our stuff. Uh, you got to, our, our new state demographer <coughs> later today. I don't know how much we'll talk about the U.S. and what you'll talk about Texas. But the bottom line is the U.S. population is not growing very much. It's growing about one percent a year. So if we want to continue to have economic growth of four, five, or six percent a year, we got to sell stuff to somebody else. And then we got to sell it to all these emerging countries. And so the fact that they're buying it is good. Imports are also up. And that takes the gross domestic product numbers down just a tad. But it's not necessarily a bad thing because it says our, our folks are spending a lot of money. They're just spending some of those stuff to make somewhere else. Like a lot of those cars and cash for lumber were made somewhere else. So if you put all that together, what you find is right now the growth, and 70% of the economic growth is normally consumption. That's what you expect it to be. Right now, we're past the inventory cycle. Consumption is going to drive growth. Excuse me. Consumption is going to drive growth for a while. It'll be a while before you see much plant equipment and commercial real estate built. You've probably heard there might be another wave or problem without commercial real estate. Everybody says, is that the next shoe to fall? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, it may fall, but it's not going to land very hard. Um, and, and, and let me give you a perspective on that. Uh, in the next three years, we have about $1.4 trillion worth of loans on commercial real estate to come to you. It didn't have to be renewed or done something with them. Um, given today's situation and what might happen in the future, if you're kind of semi between modest and pessimistic, there's probably three or four hundred million dollars in losses in those loans. Uh, they're, they're underwater by that much. So they'll have to figure out some way to extend them and do something with them and that sort of thing. So there's three or four hundred million dollars out there that they'll have to do. Three or four hundred billion dollars out there. They'll have to deal with it. Um, the total on housing was eight hundred billion. Okay, but poor <coughs> derivatives. Okay? And we don't have derivatives on the commercial real estate team. We're near the same degree. After derivatives, it was four trillion. Okay, so you're talking about four hundred billion versus four trillion. You're talking about a dime on a dollar. <coughs> so, this, so, so we yes, we'll go through some adjustment with this. Is it enough to put us through what we've been through lately? Nah, it's going to take something bigger than that uh, to do that to us. So, uh, but, but the bottom line is you won't see a whole lot of development taking place. Now, I can tell you, you will see some. One of the things my company does a lot of is the economic analysis for big real estate developments that are doing tax increment financing or, or whatever, you know, various things. We do a lot of that stuff. We had about eight projects going on a couple of years ago that just suddenly came to a screeching halt. You know, it means like all of a sudden they couldn't be financing, nobody wouldn't do anything, everybody was scared, and they just stopped during this economy. In the last three months, all eight of them have, have come back to life to some degree. Some very vibrantly, some kind of slowly, but every one of them is active again. And so we are beginning to see that, you know, those kinds of things, projects that made sense in a decent economy are starting to make sense again. And, and so, you know, we'll see some, but, but it's not going to be fast, it's not going to be dramatic uh, at this point. Uh, but, but anyway, so the going to have to drive the recovery. And it's going to be a few quarters before consumers can get us all the way back where we need to be because we've got to get the unemployment rate down. And we're starting to make some headway there. We now say, wait a minute, it went up from 9.7 to 9.9 last month. Well, that's one of those weird things. The unemployment rate is probably the worst statistic we have. It's a horrible measure. Did y'all know that a couple of times during the oil boom, the unemployment rate went up in Houston? It even went up in Midland during the oil boom. And you know why? So many people moved in that they, that they couldn't get them processed and get them working fast enough. And so, when you, you know, it's basically the number of people not working divided by the total number of people. You have a bunch of them come in, it takes a while to process.